the second state lab that we're going to be looking at is diffusion through a membrane. So first up, we have diffusion. you got to know what that one means. Remember, when I was teaching about diffusion, I would always say, think about diffusion, and we're going to make the analogy that it's like going downhill. So I go and I draw my little graph up here, and I make it so that that little graph is pointing down. Remember, that means I'm starting at my high number, going to my low number. And this is really just an analogy. It doesn't literally mean that the arrow has to be pointing down. It means that you've counted how many molecules were in the inside and then how many molecules were on the outside. And you're determining if it's going from a high number to a low number or a low number to a high number. So again, getting back to diffusion. Diffusion means, remember the analogy, going downhill. When you go downhill, think about it this way, you don't need any ATP, so we have no ATP here. Another name for diffusion is passive transport. Those two terms are going to be synonyms for one another. They mean the same thing. Here's a formal definition. Molecules moving from high to low concentration. Again, no ATP. You want to count the molecules whenever they have a question like this. Some molecules are able to pass through. Others can't. Why is that? That's because the molecules are different sizes. Small molecules are going to be able to pass through. Large molecules cannot. What are some common examples of large molecules? Large molecules include things like starch, which is the one example that we actually looked at on the state lab. Other things which could be large would include a protein or also fats. Small molecules are going to be able to pass through. What are some examples? Glucose, again, that's right from the state lab. Iodine is another example from the state lab. But you might also see simple things like water, oxygen, carbon dioxide. You want to think about small molecules. Small molecules are going to diffuse through. One thing that people typically struggle with are these indicators. We use them on several labs, but even with that, it's pretty challenging. So first up, it gives you the two. One, you have glucose and iodine. The glucose, sorry, correction. You have glucose and glucose indicator. This was that one that was that pretty light blue color initially. What we had to do was then heat it up. After we heated it up, it turned orange. So it went from blue to orange. That means glucose present. Most people can remember the color that it changed, but they forget what it means. Remember, I kind of um, was using the example of the fact that orange juice has a lot of sugar in it. Glucose is an example of a simple sugar. So therefore, the orange color is indicating glucose present. The next one we have is starch. Starch is going to be determined by starch cater. Remember, the starch indicator is called iodine. Sometimes it'll represent it by the letter I. When you have starch and iodine together, it changes from an amber color to a blue-black color. That means starch present. I would definitely make sure that I look over this a couple of times. Again, people frequently struggle with this. Next up, we have osmosis. I think about H2O-mosis, right? So osmosis is the diffusion of water you really can just stick to the term diffusion, right? Um, diffusion refers to the movement of any small molecule from high to low, so that includes water. Osmosis is only talking about the movement of water from high to low. What you have to remember, cells placed in salt water are gonna shrink. Salt water shrink, because water moves from high to low out of the cell. Even this where you write water moves high to low, you could simply say water diffuses out of the cell. Then when they replace in distilled water, remember distilled water is talking about 100% water concentration. This is going to swell. And again, that's because the water moves out or diffuse, sorry, moves in. It diffuses into the cell. <coughs>
And another thing you should be able to do, which was on the other video that I showed earlier about diffusion, is you need to know how to label where the cell membrane is, the cell wall, and then finally the cytoplasm in a drawing. Um, adding salt water to a slide here, you would have a slide, a little glass that goes over, it's called the cover slip. What you'd want to do is put a little piece of paper towel on this side. You would use an, a dropper or pipette, either word's acceptable, of salt water on this side. What then happens is that as you apply the salt water, the regular water that was initially underneath the cover slip is going to be sucked up by the paper towel. Contractile vacuole, they did have one year where they were asking this question. Um, contractile vacuole is going to remove excess water from cells living in fresh water. So if you live in fresh water, fresh water has a high water concentration. Since it has a high water concentration, that means on the outside there's going to be a lot of water molecules, where on the inside there's just going to be a couple. So water moves in. Well, that's a problem, right? Because a cell, the water is going to diffuse into the cell. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then potentially that cell could rupture. These cells that live in fresh water, some of them have an adaptation or a trait, right? Positive trait that is a contractile vacuole. Contractile vacuoles act like a sump pump and they pump out the excess water so that those cells don't explode. And then finally we have active transport. Active transport uses ATP. Again, a lot of times I like to draw it. Think about if you're using energy, what's that like? That's like going uphill. Many times they'll actually say against the gradient. 